So continuing on with uh, chapter three, part two, uh, Avogadro's number and the mole. We talked about the roadmap last class. We have the mole. If we want to get the number of atoms, we have to multiply by Avogadro's number. We have to multiply by Avogadro's number. And if we want if we were given the number of atoms or molecules and we want to get to moles, we would divide by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We also talk about the mass of a compound. So if we want to find the mass and we're given the moles, we will multiply by the molar mass of the compound. So if we wanted to find, if we're given one, let's say two moles of carbon dioxide, and we want to find the mass, we multiply by the molar mass. And we find the molar mass of a particular compound in the periodic table. So you'll need a periodic table in front of you. So for CO2, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. There's two of them. So it would be 16 times 2 is 32, plus 12 is 44 would be the molar mass. So it would be 2 times 44. And conversely, if we're given mass and we want to find the moles, we will divide by the molar mass uh, to get the amount of moles. In this equation, or this question, how many atoms are in 23.3 grams of zinc? So we start here. We're given 23.3 grams. So we start here. And we want to get over to the number of atoms. And the only way to do that is to first go to moles. So we divide by the molar mass of zinc, which is 65.39. And once we have the moles, 0 0.356, we will then multiply by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to get our answer 2.14 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc. So there's no direct way to go straight from mass to number of atoms. There's no direct way. You first have to go to the moles, which is our SI unit of amount of substance, and then from moles you go to the number of atoms, uh, which is multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You see here the units will cancel. The grams, they cancel here with the grams. So all we're left with is moles. And once we have the moles, we divide by, we multiply by Avogadro's number and divide by the moles of zinc. So all we're left with is atoms of zinc, which is our final answer. I'll give you guys a try. So you can pause the video and give it a try. How many molecules of water are there in 11 grams of water. I'll set it up for you. You're given 11 grams of water. You start here, top left corner. We first divide by the molar mass and then multiply by the number, by Avogadro's number. So we would divide by the molar mass of water, which is 18. This is mole of water. We would divide by 18 grams. 18 grams again, we get to the periodic table. And once we do that, we then multiply by Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms, sorry, molecules. the molecules per mole. Okay, I'm not going to do the work here. I'm going to let you guys calculate. But again, the answer is here on the bottom, in the bottom right-hand corner. The next question, how many grams of gold are there in 2.33 times 10 to the 23 atoms of gold? Again, pause the video. Give it a try. We start here. It's given 2.33 times 10 to the 23 grams. So we start here in the top right corner. We need to first divide to get to moles. And then once we have our moles, 
we multiply by the molar mass of gold, yes, our mass. So I'll walk you through it. We first divide. Let's do this 2.33 times 10 to the 23. We divide. So mole on top. We divide by Avogadro's number. I'll just write Avogadro's number here. You know that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Once we have our moles, we will then multiply by the molar mass of gold. And that would be 197 grams of gold. For every mole of gold. So when you multiply that out, you get 76.6, 76.2 grams of gold. The next topic, we briefly touched on upon molecular formula, which shows the actual number of atoms. And correspondingly, you can have empirical formula, which gives us the smallest whole number amount. So if I had something like, here we can just take an example, H2O2, that's the molecular formula. If we want to simplify it, we divide by two, and we'd get HO, H1O1, but you don't write the one there, you would get a simplification of just HO. So why is this important? Well, there are times where we have to find the empirical formula of a particular compound, also based on its mass percentages. So this is the steps to do this. We take the percentage of the mass, we convert it to 100 grams. So if I got something like 5.14%, we want to convert that to grams. We would say 5.14 grams. Once we have grams for the particular element, in this case hydrogen, we will divide by the molar mass. Remember, if we have the mass and we divide by the molar mass, we will get the moles. And then the new part here is we want to calculate the mole ratio to give us our empirical formula. So this is our question. A compound is composed of 61.31% carbon, 5.14% hydrogen, 10.21% nitrogen, and 23.33% oxygen. We can convert those to grams. So it would be 61.31 grams of carbon, etc., 5.14 grams of hydrogen. And I'll move to the next slide to show you what we've done. So in that case, this is the same question as I just showed in the previous slide. We've now converted them to grams. So the percentages have switched to grams. And the next step was to divide each element by its molar mass. So if you recall, the molar mass of carbon is 12. So 61.31 grams divided by 12.011 grams gives us 5.14 moles of carbon. We did the same thing for nitrogen, the same thing for hydrogen, the same thing for oxygen, and we got the respective moles, 5.104 moles for carbon, 0 0.728 moles for nitrogen, 5.1404 moles of hydrogen, and for oxygen, 1.458 moles of oxygen. So the next step is, based on our previous slide, is we need to divide each element by the smallest mole number. So if we look at our numbers in green, blue, orange, and yellow, the smallest one is in blue for nitrogen, 0 0.728 moles of nitrogen. So we're going to divide each one of the elements by 0 0.728, which I've shown you below. And this gives us a ratio of 7, 7, 1, and two. So our final answer, C7H7NO2. I want you to give it a try now. So we pause the video. I've shown you the steps that you can do, um, but I'll do it step by step with you in a second. So the first one, go back, carbon, 70.6. Divided by 12, 
Where did we get 12 from? You're right, it's the periodic table. We do the second one for H, 5.9 grams. Remember, we convert two grams from percentage. Gives us divided by 1.007. The next one is oxygen, which is 23, sorry, 23.5 divided by 16, 16 from the periodic table. And the respective answers we get are for the first one. 5.87 moles of carbon, about 5.86, and the last one for oxygen, 1.46. So we calculate the moles of each one. Now we look at the smallest one. So which one has the smallest moles? Is it carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen? You're right, it's oxygen. Therefore, we divide every single one of these elements by 1.46, and we should come up with the ratio of C4H4O. This is the empirical formula in that we cannot make it any smaller in terms of whole numbers, C4H4O. The same question that I just showed you, except we've added a part uh, B from part A, the empirical formula, as we just said, was C4H4O, and it has a molar mass of 68 grams per mole. So the next question would be, if the molecular compound had a mass, a molar mass of 136 grams per mole, what would be the chemical compound? So if we look at 136 grams per mole, we use this formula here, the molar mass of the compound, 136 grams per mole is on the numerator. We have 68, we go in the denominator, the empirical formula of the molar mass, and we come up with a value of two. So that means we'd have to multiply our C4H4O divided by two, to give us C8H8O2. Another question for you to try, so you can pause. It says here if a molecular compound is 92.81% bromine and 7.19% phosphorus, what is the a formula, molecular formula if the molar mass of the molecular compound is 431 grams? So I can walk you through it. You would take 92.8, so first convert to 92.81 grams. This is for bromine. Divide by the molar mass of bromine, 79.9. You do the same thing for the phosphorus. 7.1819 grams divide by the molar mass of phosphorus 30.97 you figure out which one is the smaller of the two when you do the division and i'll say it's the phosphorus i think 0 0.232 and the bromine comes out to 1.16 and I'll let you guys figure out the rest, but it, the ratio should be about PBR5. The next topic, quantitative information from balanced equations. We talked about balanced equations before. So if we look at this equation, yes, it's balanced. C3H8 plus oxygen gas plus CO2 plus H2O. So you can say for every one molecule of C3H8 plus five molecules of O2 gives us three moles, sorry, three molecules of CO2 and four molecules of H2O. 
You can also say you have one mole of propane, which is C3H8, reacting with five moles of O2, giving us three moles of CO2 plus four moles of H2O. You can use one or the other, molecules or moles. You cannot interject when you're talking about a chemical formula. You should always say either use moles or molecules. So here we have one mole of C3H8. Again, our propane reacts with five moles of O2 to give us three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. So you can either use molecules or moles. So as I'll show you here, for every one mole of C3H8, there are three moles of CO2, sorry, three moles of carbon, and eight moles of hydrogen. We can also say for every five moles of O2, let me just change the color, five moles of O2, there are 10 moles of oxygen. There are 10 oxygens, 10 moles of just oxygen versus five moles of O2. For every three moles of CO2, so for every three moles of CO2, there are three moles of carbon and six moles of oxygen. So, and the last one, for every four moles of water, there are eight moles of hydrogen. And how do we get that? We did the four times two to get eight. And there are four moles of oxygen. Four times one is four. So again, this is our balanced chemical equation. If I were to ask you how many molecules of oxygen are needed to burn two molecules of, of propane, you would take the two molecules, not moles, molecules of propane, C3H8. How many molecules of oxygen would that be? you have to multiply by the ratio and the ratio is oxygen and propane the ratio is 2 i'm sorry 5 o2 for every 1 c3h8 So in this case, the molecules would cancel and you're left with 2 times 5, which is 10. So how many molecules of oxygen are needed to burn two molecules of propane? The answer would be 10. So it's very important that you, when you start this kind of question to make sure it's balanced. If you don't have the correct balanced chemical equation, then you will not be able to uh, determine the proper ratios between the two when you're going from one to another. How many, let's look at the next one, how many molecules of carbon dioxide are produced when three molecules of propane are burned up? So we have three molecules here. We have to multiply by three because of the balanced chemical equation. So it's really a three. And we have to divide by our balanced chemical equation. So we have your propane again, which is a one here. So we divide by one to give us nine. And the unit would be molecules of carbon dioxide. I'll go to the next one. How many moles of, of water are produced when five moles of O2 are burned up? So we're switching over to the unit of moles. So how many moles of water are used? So we have five moles of O2. This is given in the question. We need to get over to water. So we 
use our balanced chemical equation, we need to move over to water. And what is the ratio? The ratio is 4 H2O divided by 5 O2. The O2s will cancel, and you do 5 times 4 divided by 5 gives us 4 moles of water. The last one here, how many moles of C3H8 are needed to produce 8 moles of water? So we just write what they give us in the question. 8 moles of water. So we're given the moles of water. We need to get over here to C3H8. We would multiply by C3H8, 1 mole of C3H8. For every four moles of water. And when we do the math, eight times one divided by four is two. Two moles of C3H8. So let's try to put this all together. Here we have here, well, I'll ask you, is this equation balanced? The question is no. We have N2O5, which is dinitrogen pentaoxide plus H2O dinitrogen monoxide to give us balance now which is two uh, we can say moles of nitric acid the question is how many moles of N2O5 reacts completely with one mole of H2O we look at the ratios here one to one so the answer would be one mole of N2O5 Again, we check if our equation is balanced. Yes, how many uh, moles of N2O5 does it take to make two moles of HNO2? So we have here two moles of HNO2, NO3, I'm sorry. How many moles does it take? We use our balanced chemical equation. The ratio here is two to one. So we multiply by one on top one mole of N2O5 for every two moles, sorry, two moles of HNO3. I should say moles here. The moles will cancel. Two times one divided by two is one mole of N2O2, I'm sorry, N2O5, okay? How many moles of HNO3 are produced from one mole of H2O? Well, if you have one mole of H2O and you want to find out how many moles of HNO3, nitric acid, we do one mole of H2O. Our balanced chemical equation tells us there's every, for every two moles, of HNO3, For every one mole of water, so that comes out to one times two divided by one should give us two moles of HNO3. How many moles of HNO3 are produced from 100,000 moles of H2O? You do the same thing. 100,000 moles of H2O times the ratio. So it would be two 
moles of HNO3 for every one mole of water would give us 200,000 moles of HNO3. How many moles of N2O5 does it take to make 0 0.6 moles of HNO3? 0 0.6 moles of HNO3. We multiply by the ratio. The ratio here is 2 to 1 again. So the 2 goes on the top or the bottom. It goes on the, the 2 goes on the bottom, the denominator, 2 moles of HNO3. And on top goes 1 mole of N2O5. When you do the math, 0 0.6 moles of HNO3 divided by 2, um, you get 0 0.3 moles of N2O5. So now we're including our roadmap here. It says how many grams of HNO3 are produced from one mole of H2O. So here we start with how many grams? So we start here in the top left corner. I'm sorry, that's where we want to end up. We are given one mole of H2O. So I'm going to verbally tell you what to do. You will first, you have one mole of H2O. You need to find out how many moles of HNO3 you have. So the ratio is 2 to 1. So you do 1 times 2 divided by 1 which will give you two moles of HNO3. And you guys know from the roadmap, once you have the moles of HNO3, if you want to find the mass of HNO3, you have to multiply by its molar mass. And the molar mass, you need a periodic table in front of you. The molar mass of HNO3 is 63 grams of HNO3. So I'll let you guys uh, calculate that out. Our next one, how many grams of HNO3 are produced from 3.3 moles of H2O? I just want to remind you, the step-by-step -step answers will be put on the common Blackboard site along with this uh, video, the link to this video. So I have worked it out for you. In this case, we have 3.3 moles of H2O. The ratio between HNO3 and H2O is 2 to 1. So you'll end up with 6.6 .6 moles of HNO3. HNO3. And once you have moles of HNO3, you multiply again by 63. 63 again, I have from the periodic table. So we have to multiply by 63 and we get 415.8 grams. How many grams of N2O5 are needed to make 18.5 grams of HNO3? Uh, pause, give you guys a try. first step is to convert 18.5 grams of HNO3 into moles of HNO3. So we would divide by 63. 63 again is from the periodic table for HNO3. So when I divide 18.5 grams divided by 63 grams, I get 0 0.293. And this is moles. of HNO3. Once I have the moles of HNO3, I need to use the balance chemical equation between HNO3 and N2O5. So what is the ratio? It's a 2 to 1 ratio. So then I'd have to divide this number by 2 or multiply by 1, divided by 2, and I get 0 
one four six five this would be moles moles of n205 and once you have the moles you ask to find grams you would multiply by the molar mass of n205 which is 108 grams of n205 to give us our final answer of 15.85 grams of n205 let's try another one you can just pause the video and try on your own how many molecules of h2 can be produced when 5.0 moles of al aluminum reacts with hcl so here we have here we're given five moles of aluminum so we're given five moles of aluminum we want to use the the ratio to figure out the moles of h2 so it's going to be five multiplied by three divided by two where did i get these numbers three and two from we got it from the balanced chemical equation the hydrogen goes on top hydrogen gas goes on top the aluminum goes on the bottom so five times three divided by two is 7.5 this is moles of h2 of H2 once you have the moles of H2 we're here we need to multiply by Avogadro's number to get it over here to get to our desired spot of number of uh, molecules so when we multiply by Avogadro's number we get 4.52 times 10 to the 24 molecules of H2. So let me take a step back. We're given the moles of aluminum. We first need to convert it over to moles of H2. We cannot uh, work with molar mass yet. We first have to find the moles of H2 because that's what they're asking for in the question. Molecules of H2, once we've established how many moles of h2 we have here 7.5 times 7.5 moles of h2 we multiply by avogadro's number to get our 4.52 times 10 to the 24. so we'll uh, pause there and then we'll move on to part three of chapter three uh, later